on the region. So, for example, in Indonesia, we have different art communities which started uh, to study in Yogyakarta and did not go back to, the, to their own islands. For example, uh, Klompak Cendela. So, for example, there's an artist group called Cendela. They all come from Padang, from a city in, uh, in Sumatra. They came to study to Yogyakarta and then somehow they uh, started to work together and to exhibit together. Um, so we also have, for example, a Balinese art community or different, from different areas. Uh, another idea is different ideologies. So, um, uh, for example, uh, what did we have here? Like, for example, with, uh, with Ace House as well. Um, they sort of feel like, they all feel like they are sort of maybe not stuck in their, in their private development. Uh, as, as individual artists, but they all want to, to bring the art scene further, so they want to give space to the younger artists. So age is also an important thing, so uh, people, for example, who studied in the same year, they also sometimes build a community and, um, yeah, to, to, to contribute something to the scene. So it's often related to, yeah, a year that is studied together, for example. Like you can see now, at the moment, there's an exhibition in uh, Sara. It's actually, it all started from one group of artists studying in the same year in the, in the Art Institute. Um, but most of all the artist initiatives, there are some very specific characteristics. Um, some of them are very uh, flexible, so very organic actually. Um, like you all, also could hear to, to this today, but some are very uh, fixed, for example, with um, uh, in the guerrillas, they really start from two persons, and until now, it's really a, a, a small community with two persons. Although I have questions for them in how they actually relate with other people. Uh, they, they're working a lot with artisans, for example. And uh, my question is also if you work, for example, with researchers. Um, so, and then, for example, as well with Ace House, it's also that they have a very specific membership. So, and how far are you open to have other people coming in? And for you, it's very interesting to see also how you try to build up the public. So I think the idea of public and to be seen and unseen and how far are you working on that and to, to develop your strategies, I think it's very, very interesting. So, and at the same time, it's also art about professionalizing. So not only professionalizing the artist, but also the art management also professionalizing the collectors probably, but also professionalizing maybe the governments. So we recognize a lot from your story because like maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago, we were sort of in the same situation in where the artists were not really communicating with the, with the, with the governments because there was sort of no hope or you did not want to be related to the government and the regime. So, but now the artists are really part of building the policy and kind of educating the government. So they have to, to have to be active to sort of educate the government in the sense that the government is looking at them and that they help to build a, a sort of a sustainable infrastructure. Um, so to define all kinds of different developments I think is very important and it's also very interesting to see and I think this diversity is also one of the positive things uh, that why, because we do not have a fixed infrastructure. So I think it's also very important that somehow because there is nothing from the policy above from the government, that there's this kind of open playground in which we kind of look can look into our own needs and our own strategies and develop it. I think it's also a very um, creative and a, an, open, an open space for many initiations which kind of uh, yeah, create this open field and, uh, where many things can prosper and happen. I think this is it for me for now. I give the mic to Ian. Thank you. Thank you, Mila. Uh, uh, I would like to add up something uh, on the issues of, of the uh, lack of infrastructure. There is uh, also one quite important development in the regions, uh, especially. Uh, of course, generally we share the same kind of uh, lack of infrastructure, a proper infrastructure, uh, infrastructure but, uh, in, uh, for arts, uh, lack of government support in terms of funding or policies, <coughs> except one, <coughs> except one country, 
Singapore. <clears throat> in the last at least 10 years, uh, which uh, somehow contribute a certain type of dynamics of, of uh, art development in the region. Uh, but in relation to our uh, discussion today, it, I was wondering whether the correlation between like quite persistent and, and strong government support actually like minimize artist initiatives or it's then it's got and then on the other hand it's actually the minimum uh, support and involvement of government actually then sort of like create conditions for, for, for artists in many other countries in the regions that uh, start uh, doing a lot of different types of initiatives. So with that small notes, I would like to invite questions. You can address specific questions to the speakers or each of the present presenter or to Mela. Anyone? Yeah, if you have to 
really adapt to the, the, the place that you stay and then you can manipulate everything. So that's, oh, I think that's the, the thing that I do. I think one of the most uh, flexible and very, how do you say, response, responsive ones are the, uh, is your organization. Uh, I think you almost change the strategy every year. So maybe you can talk about it. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, what I, I will say is that uh, I believe that we never lost the reason because every like life and art is always connected and always connect together and it's always a lot of good reason if the art the artist and the art quality want to like take care of life uh, take care of society so i i'm not afraid of that you don't have any to do with art because if you still are and you still have a uh, living here you have the reason to to, to, to make art uh, to put it in a very practical kind of uh, framework, yes. of course this is assumptions and I'm, I feel even now guilty if I, if I say this, but just um, by assumptions, if you get more freedom, uh, more freedom in Hanoi, uh, would your operations then change? Uh, that uh, remind me about some discussion before when I travel to Europe and then I mean I need to uh, make my art quite political like somehow but uh, not actually like very political but then the, they, uh, a lot of people from Europe they are like what happened if you your country is like open and if you live in other like freedom countries what you can do i said this is a story of life so i mean like i'm not afraid of uh and i'm i will be like i i just believe that if i stay in like the better condition i will have more free to create so that is the like, I don't know, I, I can't say any uh, practical uh, answer, but it's, for me, it's uh, like, like myself, I practice art as I practice myself, and be of myself. Um, kind of responding to your question, how do artists keep on going? Is that the question? Oh yeah. Okay, so we go back to the idea of strategies for new strategies. Okay. Well, coming from Australia, where there is arts funding, you know, arts funding comes with limitations as well. Um, like I worked in organisations where our program had to be written down and submitted to the government 18 months in advance. And the government funding bodies were quite conservative in what they wanted to fund and what they weren't what they wouldn't fund. So there was not much um, room for risk taking and there was not much room for flexibility and there wasn't much room for responding to events as they happen. And one of the things I love about working here is that we can just change direction two weeks before, you know, every few weeks we can change direction and respond to new things and come up with new projects and work in a different way. And for me that's a real freedom. And I think the other thing is that Southeast Asia is changing so fast and artists play a really important role at the edge of cultural change, articulating and reimagining, articulating what those changes are and reimagining the world for everybody else. And I think that's why there's such an interesting and lovely art scene here, because artists can do that. And I really think the environment and the ecosystem of the art here is really um, healthy. I don't know if artists run spaces have to last forever and you know there's been so many in the past and they'll continue to turn over and and artists will find their own way. Um, but there was something else I wanted to say to responding a bit to what you were talking about earlier. I do think it's important that artists engage with the marketplace. And I think that not only here but also where there's no government funding, but also in Australia as well, I don't think artists can survive without at some point defining where they stand within the, within the market. 
And I think that's what Crack made a really important decision early on to work with paper. And the reason we wanted to work with paper is because we didn't really want to engage with, um, or we didn't feel confident actually, about engaging with the market in Jakarta and Singapore and dealing with big collectors and producing work on the scale of this exhibition that you can see around you. That's not really where our heart was at. We felt like working with paper, we could, um, paper travels easily so we could find new markets overseas for a start. We also felt like there were so many great illustrators and graphic designers and street artists in Georgia whose work translated really well to paper and we could work with those artists and help them to build sustainable careers as well. So we saw this opportunity to, to kind of build a niche for ourselves in Jokja and in Indonesia and maybe further afield as well. I mean, we do, we do, we exhibit a lot in Australia through my networks and for, that, for us that's been really helpful. But um, yeah, and I think that it was important for us to have made that decision early on and to have um, kind of pushed in that direction and to build up that and I think that artists do have to do that. I think you can't I think having a critical perspective and being at that kind of uh, positioning yourself critically at the edge of cultural change is really important for artists. That's what artists have to do and that's what artists do do so well. But I think there are practicalities as well to how artists work if they're going to last. If they're going to be able to survive and how collectives and galleries work if they're going to support other artists. And the audience at the main institute and the groups and how, what kind of way, how, and how do you to uh, connect with each uh, different audience, especially from the born uh, audience, to uh, get involved in the art community. And after the characteristic art community are um, uh, uh, built up, and how do you uh, use uh, your way to connect with other cultures? Thank you. Uh, so for ISOs, because uh, we have 15 members and we are a fan, we have another activity not only doing us. Some of our members, uh, a lot of members, uh, they have a band, so popular band, famous and rock star. Another is a DJ. Uh, some of them is talent of some uh, commercial, uh, not really good commercial great on television, the small things, but. We believe we have a, uh, it's our strategies. Uh, I think now it's getting hard for youngers to be like hipster, to know more about art. So we take the responsibility about that. So we build like a temple for enthusiast art. It means like we make test house. So people, if you're thinking to be coolest now, you come on to, to my our space, you is part of the coolest in the world now. Like that. You know? So it's easy for us to, to public come not only for art artworks because in artworks we are not too much famous in artworks but every person I know us is important. We like small thing uh, in the in the big uh, in the big way. Sorry, not my English not too much good, but I think we know the strategy to be a popular. It's good in the art world. I think. very interesting to see, for example, last night uh, the opening in Art Job, how many young people were there. Uh, I think this is, we would never have dreamed of this like 10 years ago or even 20 years ago, I mean, when just really the beginning of the contemporary art in Jogjakarta. So this is, a, it's amazing and I think it's all, it's all part of what we're doing and try to kind of educate the public, doing workshops with schools, with, and try, so it's not only of, it's also part of the artist initiative that not only doing the things in your space, but also go out of the space and go directly in the public and try to involve them. And somehow this reflects back to the arts in which is growing, especially in Jogjakarta. And so. Any more questions or comments or opinions? Uh, thank you. If one, please. Support 
and on the other hand, you were mentioning Singapore, where uh, there is, is an infrastructure, but it's a very tight infrastructure, it's completely controlled and it's corporate. So I think these are two poles like black and white, and like usually in life, I think the healthy strategy like, lies more in the gray zones uh, in between. Um, and I think, of course, I also agree with Malcolm that to, to some extent, I mean, the artist should also think about, you know, making a living. But also, I think nowadays, and I think maybe the diversity of Europe, if I may say so, gives an interesting model because you have a mix of strategies. You know, some of the artists, they engage in education, so they become uh, professors in art schools or universities to sustain a living so that they have a freer space and time for, for doing artwork. And then there's also the mixing like the individual is doing, like you do like more business or more commercial oriented work, and then also we have the free time to do the other work. And this model in particular also you can see in Japan, you know, where all the new media have evolved by people working in computer labs and not in art studios and things like that. So I think the mixing is probably the, the, the way forward. And I also find that also you have stressed very important that you have stressed the peculiarities and the specificities of the place. So there is no universal approach for, 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 for Southeast Asia, but we have to look into the I think the political constraints and also the economic constraints, but I think also what all of you have raised in more explicit or not so explicit way, is that there's also the issue of acceptance. So how far does the social cultural context accept what they are doing and kind of support this that relates of course to questions of censorship, but also to questions of maybe private funding, sponsorship and then 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 then. And maybe if someone wants to comment, I mean, my question would rather be how important is it to have access to spaces? Because that's not only the question of paying the rental, but also of being accepted in a specific environment. So I think that, to me it looks like the accessibility of spaces is kind of a very um, a sensitive issue, but maybe someone can comment on that. There are some artist collective or initiative uh, network as well built almost like virtually. So that means like you don't have to be physical space, but something happens because of the network, because of the technology. Because of the, uh, so and in a way, what we call as public then somehow shifted or changed because of that. You are not. Yeah. defining feature of each of these participants, more than the space even has become. I think these days brand is kind of the most important thing, how you're, how you're understood by everybody else. I mean, he said, he said like, the project is like an idea, and yet everyone knows it. Is it trademark? Is it? <laughs> so, I think, uh, say a little bit about that because uh, for us we know the importance of the physical space but almost we have to keep up with the, the direction because the, that is very sensitive that is unstable to be in the like, like physical space in Vietnam in Hanoi yeah. But uh, then you have to find the other way to accept into the public. And then for us, we use something like idea uh, space, more like a project base, and also uh, a mobile aspect. It's like still we based on the, the physical space, but it's not important for one uh, particular place. It can be a so uh, I would like to to say like 
in Yogyakarta we have mainly too many spaces and it's not so much about the physical space uh, especially in Yogyakarta I mean there are so many buildings really, uh, yeah, we can use for art but it's more about the management so the art management that's the thing that's the problem you know how to get the thing running and how to maintain it and so we, we don't have studies for art management so you all you all be auto you are all autodidact to, to be an art worker we call it art workers here so and this is also the part of the artists they also fulfill in these roles you know or the curators or so how to yeah so yeah the physical space is not it's more it's, it's the art management i think that's the that's the thing and for sure it's in malaysia probably it's different it's, so the spaces to be physical is not a problem, it's just the, the maintaining and how to run the programs. So for us, uh, we, we try uh, like uh, three years, we, got, we, we have the idea, we don't want to have a physical space. We play this is collective, we have met in some a cafe or something to talking about our project. But for first uh, after three uh, three or four years we uh, uh, three years we thinking is that it's not effective for us because we're doing uh, creativity only if invitation come and we we like uh, easy. We, we don't have any any money to spend to rent or something. So for us uh, if we uh, rent a some of physical space, it means we put the money there and we don't want to, this is just, the money just go and we keep doing nothing. So it's more like a pressure for, for us, it is intimidated for us to do more creativity with our space because we already spend the money in that space. It's like a family, so we must, we must do something, but we still keep doing uh, Networking by social media. Now every person have own gallery in your phone, Instagram or Facebook or something. We keep doing, and we we try with the hashtag to be more more people know what we do with hashtag of Essos Collective. So you try in your Instagram, you know what we do in the uh, in the application. Thank you, Han. Huh? So, yeah, the issues of this space, like for some who really already have clear ideas what kind of program that they would have and the resources, it seems like to have a physical space to give you a certain liberty uh, to do what you want to do. For some of those who has the opportunity to build the space without a clear idea or resources or network to, to initiate programs and projects at the end of the day it, it become mausoleum. It's just uh, that. Uh, with that remarks I would like to close our session because I already see Mia Maria, the, uh, the people who will present, who will present papers, uh, conversations uh, in the next session. Different, different issues. So, uh, it's, we, we have to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for our speakers, presenters, our friends here from SPC. Especially for uh, Nam uh, Isay, who, who, who traveled from, 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 from Vietnam and Malaysia and visiting us here. Thank you very much. And for the rest, also thank you. And for the audience, thank you.